Good morning, millennials. Welcome back to the shows and happy Friday. It's a celebration. It's an extravaganza. It's the end of the week. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Hey, Jax, how you doing? I'm doing good. A hard earned end of the week. It's been a sick week for your girl. I've seen you guys complaining in the comments and I just want to say, imagine how I feel. You're tired, how tired of, she of You're tired of, of me sniffling? Imagine how I feel sniffling. Have um, some compassion. How are you feeling? Are you wearing my shirt? I'm wearing this outfit that you gave me when I was pregnant because I have so much cabbage in. You're cabbaging in this very moment? I'm right cabbaging right now? in this moment. And Zach bought me a fresh cabbage yesterday. That is the, the biggest cabbage at the patch. So the leaves are huge and they literally go up to my neck. If I just open one button, look. Cabbage. Oh my God. And you <laughs> thought. <laughs> You thought that the gorgeous Norma Kamali set that I gave you should smell like cabbage? That's well, how you receive the gifts that I give? I wanted to look amazing today. And I said, oh, some of my most amazing outfits were gifted to me by Claudia. Not the black and white cardigan. Dark times. <laughs> Dark times. No, and I needed something where you wouldn't see all this cabbage. But I didn't want to do like another sweatshirt. Oh, you know what it was, Turdy? Actually, I had already put my hair up. And I had already put my eyebrow glue on. So I couldn't put something over my head. So I went for my button downs. And then I saw this outfit that I love so much. And yes, it is a little oversized. Because I'm like teeny tiny. And I thought, perfect. Okay. Noted. I love this outfit, La Terre de Lou. Me too. That outfit's kind of like, it really is a sisterhood of the traveling pants type of outfit. It looks good on everyone, whether it's a little small on you, whether it's a little big on you. Like it could be snug, but it could also be oversized. Like it's kind of the most amazing outfit. And I think like each sister should wear it. It would fit every sister. Like it that's what's magical about it. Fit every sister. The last time I wore it was at your birthday and I was nine months pregnant. Slayed the house down boots. Yup, boots. Today, five and a half months out, slaying the house down boots cabbage. Slaying the house down boots cabbage. Write it down for title. <laughs> That's just like the house down of many options we will have today. Even though, like, so let's let's give some inside baseball tea to like the girlies listening today. I'm very particular about titles because it's like so. Slay the house down, boots, boots cabbage is like a funny thing that we've said. But if you are toast agnostic and you're scrolling through the charts, it's not something that's going to make you want to listen. Not only that, it's too long. Like I have a character limit oh, on the title. This doesn't work for me. I the way it shows up limits. on our YouTube cover photo, the way it shows up on our social cards, even the way it shows up in the charts. If it's this long sentence, people can't read the whole sentence. I love a short, quick, nasty title. Like especially one that like when Taylor Swift does something, it's like so great for our business. Like Taylor on the field earlier in this week. That's our highest ep listened to episode. Not necessarily because of the title, because I think a lot of people wanted to know what we were going to say about Taylor. But they the know field. for sure that we're going to be talking about it. And then actually, maybe some people who are casually scrolling the charts, they see this episode that's like in the top 1% and they're like, oh, the top 1% talking about Taylor on the field. Let me listen. That actually would get new listeners. No, they see, oh, the one percenters are talking about Taylor Swift. Right. And how many other podcasts in like the top 20 overall podcast episodes of the day have Taylor in the title that day? Like really none. It's all about, you know, war yes. and the election. Also, once again, another Friday has rolled around where I have an overwhelming amount of options for Weenie of the Week. And I might have one queenie. I was thinking about it as I was doing my makeup this morning and then I forgot about it. But it will come to me. I had I had some early starters, but it, it's just like, it's hard. It's hard to like get so in the weeds, you know? Cause then I'm like, I'm like, is this person deserving of weenie? And then I zoom out and I'm like, Sinwar. Sinwar is my weenie. Yeah, no, you're, you need oh. to like kind of reset your level. I have my weenie. Oh. The weenie has spoken. I can't wait. The weenie has emerged. Oh, wow. The weenie has made him or her or themselves known. Oh, my God. Is it? Okay. You know what? I guess I'll just have to wait and say. They've made and they I, themselves known. They. It's a group of people or a non-binary person? You'll have to stay tuned till the end of the show to find out. Yikes. <laughs> um, so we, of course, have a great show for you guys today. I was inspired by my absolutely gorgeous drop dead diva bitch ass of a sister to get a spray tan today, which I'm going to do later today, just oh. to kind of like look gorgeous for the weekend. Love that for you. You've just inspired me to book my next spray tan. You I've know, been one thing about 2024, that. like let's stay on top of our beauty treatments so we stop looking like rats. Like we're on camera every day. And like the fact that for years I wasn't consistently getting spray tans, consistently getting lash lifts, consistently taking care of myself, consistently exfoliating. Like we are going to be beautiful this year. That's the goal, bitch. 
I love that for us. And like I've said, once I'm done weaning, it's over for you bitches. So you better enjoy these last few weeks. You better enjoy you, them. By the way, all you bitches who've been like laying dormant while Jackie's kind of been like in her nesting, hibernating, <laughs> you know, big breasted cabbage years, like watch the fuck out, bitch. Wake up. Wake no. up. She's coming for you. Enjoy these last few weeks. Your time is winding down. Oh, yeah. Just wait till she starts shooting herself up with Ozempic. It's really over for you, bitches. Yeah. I mean, I've Even decided. You said you're not going to do that. I, I've decided that's just not in the cards for me right now. Um, I'll let you guys know if, if that changes for any reason, but I, I really don't know why it would. Listen, your decision is your decision. And it, and it pains me to make that decision because I'm so eager, like, to see, to see what it's like. The, like to experience the juice and the magic. By the way, the cool thing about it is that like it lasts one week. So like I could shoot I guess you I up. I could do like, it like one week and just. I like, could shoot. Like, by the way, then this, I'm, I'm not recommending this. I'm not a doctor. I'm just saying like you, I could bring some and like shoot you up. And like, we could just like see how amount. I feel. I just know I'm going to be addicted. No, I know. By the way, it's literally heroin in a needle. It's like my version of heroin. No, it's my version of heroin too. I don't think I would like traditional heroin. I but think I, every, everybody I think likes heroin. Is that everyone does. That was a crazy part of Mike Sorrentino's book that I can't stop talking about it because it was so good. At the very height of his addiction, he had gotten sober like many times, but really fake sober just so we could get back to work. At the very height of his addiction, he had like literally spent every day. He was making millions. He had not a dollar to his name. He had sold all of his cars, everything to buy drugs. And his girlfriend and his parents like knew he was a drug addict so they were keeping an eye on him his friend came picked him up he ran in the car they drove to newark and this guy his friend was like i know where we can score some cheap drugs they pick it up they go to the guy's house mike opens like the tinfoil thing and he's like oh my god it's heroin and he had never done heroin before and he like said he was not going to do it and i forget what actually happened i think he did it or like lauren his now wife called him at the second he was about like thinking about doing it it was like this crazy moment in the book and yeah, he was like, he was like, I was a crazy addict, but my line was heroin. Like I was never gonna do heroin. But then here he was faced with the only option of heroin. Yeah. Damn. And I can't talk about <coughs> heroin without talking about that episode of, <coughs> you okay? Yeah, it's just, I feel like that coughs proves to people that I'm sick. Like you have respect. You want us just to cut it out the time? No, is no, 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 minutes. no, oh, no, okay. no. And it's, a, I don't have a chronic cough right now. It was just a clearing of the throat because I'm on the mend and I'm hoping that by Monday I will have watched the Barbie movie and I'll be able to discuss it without sounding nasally. So as I was saying, I really can't talk about the drug heroin without thinking about that episode. Well, that segment Dr. Phil did on those three sisters who were addicted to heroin and who lived <sighs> in that sort of like crack den and how I spoke about it on the toast. No, actually, I think it was the breath like many, many years ago. But it turned out one of them was a brother and she like DM'd me and she said she thought it was hilarious. I'm like, oh, OK. Classic. The toast they is my heroin. Out, they had tapped out the veins in their arms and they started shooting up. Stop. Between their Claudia, toes. stop. Claudia, okay. just stop it. No, honestly, like, I feel like... No, we're moving, we're... Fricka, fricka, we're switching gears. Okay, here, here's what's something that's sad that happened to me this morning. Great. I saw on Instagram this, like, absolutely gorgeous picture of Ariel Charnas on her Instagram stories, just looking so sick. And I was like, what if I just swiped up? And I really wanted this coat. She had, like, the cutest outfit on. Let me go yeah, see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's very... I think it's from yesterday, because it was very early in her stories. Okay, it's a great. white coat. Okay, she has like a Chanel bag, a white coat, leggings. Like it's just like a cool girl, like Upper East Side mom. And I'm like, I think I need to look like that. Let me okay, see it. so why didn't you just hit the copy paste? Fifteen hundred dollar jacket, like girl, come Let me on, see what it's, Ariel Charnas. Let me see what it's made of. Your mom's and chest hair. And she did hair? do a look for less. Oh, and I, I see. Love, I see. How how sickening? Okay, I see the coat. Where's the swipe up? Oh, she's th posted all these throwbacks. Oh no! By the way, you're you're too far gone. It's prior. It's, it's over. Okay, so let me go back to the coat and analyze and it. And tap the link. Tap the link. It's right it's there. It's not linked. Oh, it must have expired. It was from yesterday. $1,500. And then my queen, she was like, oh, let me do a look for less. Oh, I for see. Something. I see it on the grid. So now she said, oh, here, I'll link a jacket for less for you broke bitches. I'm like, okay, great. I'll do the... Only her dupe is from Revolve. I'm like, that's not the dupe. That's the goal, you know? Yeah, but... What about that one for you? That's really like where you're where you like to shop. I don't know. Compared to like the one that she posted, I just felt like it would be cheap. Like even though it was a three hundred dollar coat, like it definitely wasn't cheap. But like I don't know, it didn't feel right. I wanted the one. Well, the thing is, I do really like the style of coat, so I do want to persuade you to get it. All right, calm down. I'm not getting it, and I just feel like you need it. I feel like I need it too. Even for though you, I don't really. Otherwise, how would you be warm if you didn't have this coat? 
Well, I do have my vest that I'm currently wearing that was uh, $4 from Amazon, so I feel good about that. I also am wearing my 1989 Taylor's merch that I ordered in October that took four months to come that arrived literally yesterday. So you're feeling warm enough? I'm feeling warm enough, and I just want to thank Taylor because honestly, like her having a four-month lead time like makes me feel so good about our Toast merch, which if you've ordered, like you should be getting in like literally a week or two. Which in a is fraction so of the Taylor time. Right, so thanks, Taylor. We love you for that. Yeah, I just think you should get that coat. I really like it. And I think it would just elevate. It, would, it wouldn't just be about the coat. It would kind of change who you are as a person. Sorry. Okay. I could wear it with agree. everything day or night and everyone would say, oh my God, there's Claudia. Just like kind of their breath would be taken away by you in, in that coat. Oh no, you're like kind of convincing me. Also, a I coat can you- change a person. Wait, what if you get the coat for me? No, what if we find a reason why you should treat yourself? No, okay. I need to find like, an. I know, no, no. I could that's easy I need a coupon code I should have done honey like I should have but like the brand was wardrobe like they don't do coupon codes you know like they're not like us no you just have to what if Ariel Chardis is just like done with the code and she could give it to me even though she's probably like a size double zero just get the code I don't know. Fifteen hundred dollars is a lot of money on a no, coat. No, but why don't you order the coat? If it does, if you put it on and it doesn't change who you are, then return it. And if it does, then you're meant to have it, and you'll wear it so many times it'll justify the price. Coats are expensive, like when they're made of things that will keep you warm. When they're made of coat. When they're made of real coat, that's like a real coat. Like one thing about me, like I, for no reason. Like, will defend Ariel Charnas to the death. Like, she's just a person I follow on the internet who I feel fiercely protective over. There's a few people like that. Like, I'm always going to bat for them, even though I literally don't even know them. And would they do the same for you? No. Actually, I don't know Ariel Charnas's character, but I imagine she would. And it's not tit for tat. You don't do it to get it in return. You do it because it's the right thing to do. Like, Brittany no. Mahomes won't be defending me anytime soon, right. but I'll keep defending her. No, no, exactly. Like, I do it because my job is to comment on the culture, and I'm going to speak from the heart. Yeah. Yeah. And you're not going to yeah. like add to their burden, to their pile. They have enough people coming at them. No, it's so true. And just having been someone who has been piled on on the internet a couple of times, like I know what that's like. And I'm literally like never going to be a part of it, you know? Except if it's Justin Timberlake. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. This conversation's really only talking about girls. Like I feel differently <laughs> about girls and boys. Like boys can handle it for real. Yeah. Also, celebrities versus influencers is, is different, as we've stated so many times. By the way, Justin Timberlake and Ariel Charnas, like, couldn't be more different. Yeah. I'm glad that we've established that because I think people were confused. I did, however, buy the socks from her LTK swipe up. So you got a like, piece of the magic. I got a piece of the magic and I spent $30 on socks. Like, she's insane. I'm sure your feet will be so warm. We live for it. I love enabling people to buy nice things. It's really one of my passions in life. And I've also recently... Like my itch has been reactivated. Yeah, like you're feeling like you want to invest in some Feeling things. like shopping, feeling like shopping well, like till I'm coming, dropping. Like, because, because I'm coming out like of yourself hibernation. Again. Yeah. Right. And I we'll got go like, shopping together oh my God. when I come down. Yes, and Vlog. I can drive you. And I got like one thing recently. I, I'll drive. And it just, no, I'll drive. Oh, you know what I realized? I was playing around with my Tesla yesterday. I realized, you know how you don't like Tesla because it's like a golf cart in terms of stopping and starting. It's not traditional the way we were all taught to drive, which is foot on the brake at all times. You can change the settings so that it will drive like a car that you're used to. So if you ever want to drive it, you could drive it that way. Oh, we should definitely do that. And you should probably do that too, just so you can, you're like a new driver. You should know how to drive one type of car. No, I drove Dak's car the other day. It wasn't pretty, but we made it home. (laughs) Yeah, I just honestly, like, whenever you talk about driving, like, I get the vibe, like, you don't want to succeed. Like, for real. What is it? No, I I do want to, I want more than anything for this not to be, (laughs) like, this big impediment in my life. But I just, I'm too cautious of a person, you know? And I can't just throw caution to the wind on this. It's too important. No, I know that. So, like, it would be more cautious of you to set up your Tesla like all the other cars on the planet. Why? I only need to really know how to master my own car and I find it easier to drive this way. Like I'm more comfortable. I don't want to keep my foot on the brake at all times. Okay. I could just like sit at a light and my both feet are willy nilly. How crazy. What are you going to do? A dance? You never know. Irish jig? You never know. How are the stories today? I feel better than yesterday. Oh, okay. And I didn't even think yesterday was so bad. Yeah, no. 
They came Updates. together in a nice manner. Any follow up stories on Tarek's arm tyke? I would love no. T A H. What else do T-A-H. you want to know? Has Christina spoken out? Like anything? Oh, I don't know if I would click if Christina spoke out. Like, I don't think I would notice that. It wouldn't pop off the page to me because she's always like in People Magazine, like sharing her favorite bracelet, you know? Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, she's always in People Magazine sharing her favorite bracelet. So I don't know if I would notice. I kind of like scroll past the headlines. About and by her. the way, what's so no, funny? No was shade. There was there was a storyline in Selling Sunset, like season one or two, that Christine Quinn said. Like Heather was so upset that Christine Quinn said how. Um, Heather is always in People Magazine, like sharing her favorite muffin recipe. Tarek El Musa married the same woman. Yeah. Twice. Yeah. Yeah, he did. Yeah. So I really like Heather and Tarek, though, so I'm, I'm not going to say anything. You're not going to be a hater? No. I really like Heather. And if A equals B and B equals C and she loves Tarek and I love Heather, then I love Tarek. I love using the theorem of logic. A equals B, B equals C. No, what is that? The chain? What's that theory chain called? Chain theory? A, chain theory. Like A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. It's never not right. No, it's so factual. And don't even start like when we throw D in there. And then A equals D. No, that's too much. It's a hair too far. Also, let me tell you about a new thing I'm experiencing that's actually ruining my life. Um... I woke up at three in the morning and I went back to bed at six and like I just woke up like an animal like at my usual time which is about eight eight thirty I actually didn't get out of bed till nine I, I, I really couldn't I don't know what the fuck is up with that and it's really pissing me off and it has to it has to be done it has to be stopped well at least when you come here you can make yourself useful at those hours oh my god give a little no, bottle but I would love that but like no you know no I think you would like it and then Ben wakes up and he's like, are you awake? And I'm like, yeah, because I was I scrolled on my phone. I was literally laying there for like 30 minutes. I'm like, I have to do something. I'm so bored. And so Ben was like, are you on your phone? I'm like, yeah. He's like, well, that's why you, he starts yelling at me. He's like, that's why you can't sleep. I'm like, do you think I want to be here? Like, do you think I want to be doing this right now? Okay, not to be the Ben's advocate, but it's true. Like you turning on your phone tells your brain, hey, it's awake time. You'd be better off just turning on your Kindle, please. Wow. Yeah, oh. the light from your phone signals to your brain that it's time to be awake. So you're actually accomplishing like the exact opposite thing of what you're setting out to do. Oh, so we have gotten to a place in this show where you took my husband's side. Noted. Yeah, it's dark times. Noted. And I will be calling your husband later. I think actually that Ben took my side because that would have been my argument. Tell Zach he will be hearing from my people. You're going to take his side? I'm going to set up a call with Zach. Ask him what's going on in your marriage and how I can help make it worse. <laughs> what would he want you to take his side about? I feel like you guys disagree on like the dumbest, most random stuff. Like, yeah, like I can't even I can't even remember. And whenever I'm at your house, you know, I ride for you. Yeah. Now, it's usually because you're right. But I still like even if you weren't right, I wouldn't feel right about not taking your side. Maybe I would just like walk away. No, and we love when we're like <laughs> having a disagreement to like opening it up to the jury. <laughs> <laughs> Which is really the worst thing you can do for a marriage or just any sort of relationship. Yet, you know, nevertheless, we persist. And I always ride for you. So the fact that not only you would take my husband's side, but you do it publicly on this show here. Noted. That's how much I care about dirty sleep. I'm not going to tell you what you want to hear. Noted. I think after this, I'm going to listen to good guys. Noted. And I'm going to like and subscribe. You know what I think I'm going to do? I think I'm going to go listen to Reese's Book Club podcast and like and subscribe and maybe share it on my Instagram to my millions of devoted followers. Maybe that's what I'll do. Whoa, she got me there. Yeah. Maybe I'll start my own. Wow. Hit me where it hurts. Yeah. But and you would do that to the redheads. Like it's not just about me. We're a collective. Yeah, no, and I would, I would actually just it would be a spite podcast. (laughs) (laughs) But then Curb comes back on Sunday exciting that is very exciting they did like a big premiere for it larry was on the today show larry's looking good i didn't see it oh why do i get the vibe you like hate larry like what is no i don't you're just like giving like i hate larry energy (laughs) i am i am but i love curb no it's the best show on tv and actually so i just feel like he's a little no offense demi lovato being like this is the last season of curb oh stop it back by the way thank god for that no, I'm glad for it, but like, stop saying that. I think this is like the final season of Curb. 
until he comes yeah, back. No, they say it, uh, he always says it's the final season, and then that was like four seasons ago. However, I think he just like he. It's what's more relatable than that? Like working really hard on something and being like, okay, never again. And then a month later, being like, well, what if I just did another season? I. It's like Tom Brady. He he. They had a big premiere for it, and actually, that guy. So funny. Remember that guy who worked at um. I think he went to Colgate, the journalist from E News who like got fired for like ten. Yeah, he got fired for like a shady reason. Now he's like the face of Variety. I feel like nobody talks about that. Oh, interesting. What's his name? Ken Baker. He went to Colgate, right? Yeah, he did. Um, so not Baker. Uh, <clears throat> who is this? Ken Baker. Yeah, he went to Colgate. He asked Larry, "What is your favorite? Like, what do you think is the best episode of Curb of all time?" And Larry said, "And it couldn't be more appropriate: Palestinian chicken." Yeah, that is the best episode of TV, like ever. <laughs> it's it's just like a crazy episode of TV. It is, but that's not my favorite episode. I couldn't tell uh, you what my favorite episode is, but there's one episode with the Ben's girl. Ben's favorite episode. <laughs> Excuse me. There's one episode. Oh my god. Yeah. There's one. We both episode just started with talking the at the same time. From Twenty Two Jump Street. She's also in other stuff. Um, Jillian. What's her last name? Jillian. That's what I was about to say. That's Ben's favorite episode where she wears a crop top and Larry holds onto her belly. That's Ben's favorite episode. So it's just like one that really sticks out to me. I remember after I saw it, I called you and I was like, you have to watch this episode. It is Ben's <laughs> favorite episode. Well, I'm so glad that, you know, our crossed paths, we would have ended up at the same place anyway. It's not about the journey. It's about the destination. Yeah, it's about the destination and not interrupting people as, as frequently as you can. I just think it's so fucking important to remember. Like we're literally on a delay here. We both started talking at the same time. It may have felt like I was interrupting you, but we started at the same time. Gaslight. Okay, like low key. Why am I lying? Like, no, I only interrupted you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, I actually wanted to come clean about a lie I told earlier on the show. Like, I'm burning yourself, Turdy. I shared last, maybe, was it earlier in this week or maybe last week, like that I hit a new milestone in my fitness journey that I ran four minutes straight. Like, it was three. I don't know why I lied. Like, I was just straight up making stuff up. It was three, period. Yes. Yeah. No extra seconds. Like, I'm sure maybe it was like three, two or something, but it wasn't four minutes. Okay. You're only lying to yourself, really. I'm okay with that. Yeah. And maybe like if you told that lie, it, it inspires you to actually get to that four minute and it's motivational. So yesterday I was like, okay, if I just hit the four minute, then I, it wouldn't have been then a Then you're liar. not a liar. I literally couldn't. Like I was dying, cramping. You'll get there. Yeah. So sorry about that. I'm coming clean. I think we should get into the stories because we've got a I lot to so do too. today. And we're being like a little radical 25 minutes. Like What? It's yeah. 25 minutes? We're at 23.30. Not me making Jeez. up numbers again. Jeez Louise. Without further ado, here are the Fast Five stories that you need to know. And the Fast Five stories that you need to know are brought to you by Dossier. After learning about the incredibly high markup across the designer perfume industry, Dossier began their mission, make luxury fragrances accessible. So at Dossier, each scent is crafted of the best ingredients sourced from Grasse France, the perfume capital of the world. Their expert perfumers are among the industry's top noses, each of them having worked with the most prestigious luxury brands that you see on the market today. Fragrances cannot be patented, and the ingredients inside the designer perfumes that you all love cost about $2. That's why Dossier decided that it's time to revolutionize the fragrance industry and bring you the same designer quality for a fraction of the cost. All the perfumes range from $29 to $49, and today we have a discount code for all of you. So they have perfected a wide range of designer fragrance impressions, yes, dupes, inspired by some of the most popular fragrances and a variety of unique original perfumes for everyone to find their personal scent. I love that somebody's tackling the fragrance industry, or as I like to call it, the water in a bottle. It's literally insane. Like you'll pay... There are people who pay $300 for a bottle of perfume, and it's literally water. It's staggering what perfume costs these days. It is staggering what perfume costs these days. And I just want to say, I got the Dossier products, and I got, like, a sampler, and it was so awesome because they not only give you, like, I don't know how many perfumes were in there, maybe 10, but they came, it came with a one sheet of, like, what each perfume, what it's inspired by, the, like, designer. Yep. It's a dupe. And one, I could smell, it smells exactly like something else. And two, like, now I'm a designer perfume girly for a fraction of the cost. At Dossier, indulging in luxury is personal pleasure that everyone can enjoy. So visit Dossier.co and use code TOAST at checkout for 10% off your next order. That's D-O-S-S-I-E-R dot co, code TOAST for 10% off. Today's episode is also brought to you by Nutrafol. 
if you experience anything like hair thinning, shedding, hair issues, check out Nutrafol. I feel like everybody, whenever anyone experiences like a hair issue for the first time in their life, they all turn to Nutrafol. And everybody I know has such good things to say about it. Actually, our sister Olivia just started it. So hair thinning is very complicated. It's much bigger than your actual hair. It usually doesn't even have to do with your hair. I know when I experienced like really bad hair shedding last year, um, it had to do obviously with my drastic change in diet and weight loss. So there's always something going on inside. It can be stress, it can be hormones. Of course, postpartum, um, whatever the reason is, Nutrafol is gonna tackle that specific reason. With their hair wellness quiz, you can get personalized hair health plans today. It's the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement with over a million people seeing thicker, stronger, faster growing hair and less shedding. The three minute quiz determines what the underlying root causes are that are keeping you from reaching your hair potential. So by analyzing your lifestyle, biology, hair history, as well as environmental triggers, Nutrafol creates a hair health plan that is tailored to your hair needs. So start your hair growth journey today by taking Nutrafol's hair wellness quiz. Get your personalized hair health plan today. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping at Nutrafol.com slash quiz when you enter promo code the toast. Take the quiz and get started on reaching your hair wellness goals with Nutrafol today that's n-u-t-r-a-f-o-l.com slash quiz that promo code is the toast nutrafol.com slash quiz promo code the toast thank you la you are so unbelievably welcome okay our first story some wendy williams news as a new yes. trailer for her documentary has dropped um wendy williams is finally telling her side of the story in a trailer for lifetime's documentary called where is wendy williams the iconic tv host openly abuses alcohol and breaks down crying as she details the financial strain she's experienced from being placed under a guardianship she says i have no money the documentary features her son kevin hunter jr her sister wanda and more family members as they fight to help her get well physically but also free her from the financial prison in which she finds herself her sister says, we all make choices in life. We all go through our challenges. She's still a person. Her son also claims that her court-appointed guardian hasn't done a good job of protecting Wendy. And Wanda echoes that the system is broken. Wanda says, we are her family. And you tell me I'm not t capable of taking care of my sister. What would you do? What should I do? Uh, I feel like everyone in the world has been wondering, like, where in the world is Wendy Williams? And now we know. And it's like worse than we could have thought. I really thought she was just, like, taking time privately to deal with her health issues also she was on tv every day for many many years maybe she just wants to like i don't know be alone but the reality is much worse and i'm glad she's making that lifetime money because like she sold this documentary this is a project this is income yes but it, the guardianship is kind of confusing it's like who is the guardian and it seems like it's her former or current financial advisor at like wells fargo and mm -hmm. her money is like there and oh, I thought she it, had no money. No, I think she has no money because she doesn't have access to it. I was very mm. confused. I was trying to like read more about in like the Wells Fargo Guardian like is like complains that she has to have like armed security because of like the Wendy fans, you know, every like she's kind of like the no, villain in the this way, story. The Wendy fans like are extremely zealous. Like it's a real community. I just I don't understand what's happening here and how like Wendy or her family, how they have a guardian placed on them who is in charge of their money and she doesn't have like access to it no I and also even this lifetime money like does it go into that pot is it right. more for the guardian i also don't understand how um things went so bad so quickly with wendy williams i feel like she was on tv consistently for so long and then she had some like personal issues with her husband and then her health and then boom she's fired like i feel like it all happened so quickly yeah also her physical health isn't Graves great in the disease. documentary she's like in a wheelchair and she's just struggling so it's all very compounded and i guess the documentary will get to like the roots of each, each of these issues but it's been a very hard few years for her no and i highly recommend the lifetime movie that she produced about her life wendy williams is a hustler i feel like in like this day and age she's like the butt of jokes but like people don't realize like how major it was that she got her own daytime show. She like started in radio. She hustled so hard. She was like all about gossiping freely on radio, like not giving a fuck. She started in like the R&B space. She made a lot of enemies. And it's, she kind of has like an amazing story. Now the Lifetime movie was like hella dramatized and like low key really stupid, but I loved every minute of it. And I feel like we need a serious Wendy biopic. Like she has a real story for real. Like she's been through a lot of stuff. So I have a lot of sympathy and I love Wendy. Like I really do. Yeah. Yeah. I and she's just, responsible for so many iconic, like, viral moments. Mm -hmm. 
I would ask people to respect my privacy, but I don't do it with those hot topics. That's the best video. She's such a queen. Like, remember when she literally fainted on air? She's yeah. been through a lot. She's been through a lot. So I don't even know what like peace looks like for her at this point. You know, is it a return to TV? Because that's like it what is. she does and who she is. Yeah. But then on the other hand, it's like maybe she needs a break. Totally unrelated, but do we have it as a story today that my Lord and Savior Darius Rucker was arrested? Next up. I'm devastado about this. Next story. Hootie and the Blowfish frontman Darius Rucker has been arrested for minor drug offense in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Darius Rucker was arrested on Thursday in Williamson County, Tennessee, where he lives. Page six can confirm the Hootie and the Blowfish frontman was taken into custody and booked in three count three misdemeanor charges, including two counts of simple possession slash casual exchange of a controlled substance and one count of a violation of the state's vehicle registration law. Police accused Rucker of driving with an expired registration tag, according to TMZ. He was really- Is that arrest worthy? Which- I feel like everybody's registration is literally expired. Well, in conjunction with these other- yeah, I don't know. I feel like somebody has it out for Darius. He sounds like such minor offenses. Like, I'm really upset. Like, I feel like Darius is a good guy. Oh, you think it's a conspiracy against Darius? I do. Like, I actually conspiracy. do. It's a conspiracy, Rucker. Conspiracy, Rucker. Well, okay. But like, ca I looked it up. Casual exchange of a controlled substance can mean, like, passing a joint to someone. Totally. That's what it sounds like. Literally. Okay, let's Would you break like them to down. casually exchange this controlled substance with Three me? misdemeanors. Two counts of simple possession. Simple could be... A joint in the pocket. Right. No. And I feel like two means joints it's, it's in the pocket for two counts. It's literally. And I feel like simple means marijuana. If it was anything other than that, whether like prescription pills or cocaine, like it would have been not simple. It would have been complicated. Oh, no. I feel like prescription pills could be simple. This is just like a feel, my feeling. So I could be totally wrong. I feel like prescription pills could be simple. But that wasn't no, I feel what like I was prescription thinking. pills is like a higher level. And I feel like cocaine could be simple. No, there's nothing simple about cocaine. It's the <laughs> devil's drug. I know, but I just feel like, I feel like it could be simple possession if it's just like a little baggy. No, no. I feel like they take cocaine like really seriously. And then casual exchange of a control substance like passing the baggy. I just feel like if I know anything about Hootie, it's that he's much more of a pot man. Like I couldn't see Hootie doing blow, like railing lines. I agree. Let's look at the mug shot. And it's unflattering. It is not a good mug shot. I feel like, again, this is a conspiracy against Hootie. Like that angle, every, the lighting, it's so bad. Like I feel like you can do a few things. Like I feel like they need to wipe the lens, you know? Yeah. On the back of the camera. It's a bad photo. It's not a good look for Hootie. The thing about like country fans is they don't give a fuck. Like I don't think this will affect Hootie whatsoever. No, I just but feel up like until now, I feel like he does have a kind of sterling record. reputation. But I did see a headline this morning. I'm going to pull it up. Like his ex-girlfriend is out here like talking about how this is karma for Hootie. Oh, so like I don't like when people, you know, when they kick someone when they're down. Yeah. And I was, of course, worried when I saw this headline that he was obviously arrested for a DUI because that to me that's oh like that's un unforgivable it's an unforgivable line crossing and I was worried because I was getting you know Sam Hunt flashbacks however so his ex a little pot his ex is a comedian and she posted on X saying yes I've heard all I can say is karma heart Ooh, what's her name and then she uh, her name is Kate Quigley and then she also posted a selfie of her lounging in a blue bikini with while sticking her tongue out. And she said, mood when you hear your D-bag ex got arrested. I stand with Darius. He's a national treasure. I'm sorry. I only want to be with you. Like, I only want to be with Darius. A -E -A -O -O -O. I yeah. stand with Darius. Yeah. Darius is one of those people, like, it would take a lot for me to stop standing, you know? Yeah, and and as we've like proven, these are misdemeanor, simple charges. Could have been conspiracy. Kind of conspiracy. It's conspiratorial. Okay, it's giving conspiratorial energy. Yeah, but I do think just because he has such a pristine reputation, Record. like it's not great. I think he'll survive it. Oh, big time. And I think people will forget soon. Like, remind, set a calendar alert for like in a year and see if we remember. No, and like low key, we shouldn't have even made it a story because we're contributing. Because like literally no one's talking about this because that's how much everyone just loves Hootie. Like we're looking past it. Yeah, but it's a Friday and there like wasn't much else. So like don't get arrested on a Thursday, guys. Try it for Sunday. Oh my God. It's so important that if you're going to get arrested that it be like towards the end of the week. 
Yeah, on the weekend, buried. Love. Thursday, stories were sparse today. Sorry, Darius. But at the end of the day, it just depends on the story. Like Erica Jane very smartly dropping her divorce news during like one of the most heated elections of our time. We still cared. Like, I'm sorry. It, there was no undoing that. Of course. I actually, I think she intentionally dropped it on election day to kind of bury it. But yeah. because there was no other news, because everyone was talking about the election, it was kind of the only news if you didn't want to talk about the election, which is us. Which is so true, by the way. Like, kind of backfired. I can't believe there's like another election. Seriously, I hate election season. Don't, like, I can't. Do you hate everyone? all election seasons? Like, all every year or just the president? Just the president one, because I feel like there's not a lot of like hype for like midterms and stuff. And like low key, every time I vote in like like a little like mayoral or whatever, I just feel like such a small town girl. Like I really do love it. And it's like it's just har it gives harmonious energy. It does. People become the worst versions of themselves. Everyone I'm talking about during the election, the presidential election season, like do not talk to me like I, I really can't. Yeah, but make sure you pack a snack. And if it's raining, maybe an umbrella. We absolutely have to repost that clip during election season. The way influencers acted last, was it presidential? No, that wasn't four years ago. No, was that it? was present, yeah. I was sitting in this chair four years ago. Four years ago. No, it, was, it was a remote clip. 2020, we were in that studio, La. It but wasn't a clip. clip. We didn't clip yes. it. It's just yes, a funny. Yes, we did. No, it's a clip. It's a clip. I, okay. I swear to God, it's a clip moment and it's remote. And it must have just been a regular election where people, influencers, like were creating graphics, like teaching people how to vote, like bring a snack, grab an elderly neighbor. Like we know. Yeah. No, if it's raining, like wear your rain boots and don't forget your windshield wipers to turn yeah, them no, no. on. Pack a snack. I can't. Yeah. Or like go to like, you know, how to find your polling, polling place. place as if like it's not constantly every time you open up Facebook, Instagram, it's like pop up. How to it's vote. the same every year. <laughs> oh, that too. I've never been voting at the same like school for a hundred years. That too. But I guess if you're a new voter, let's give them the yeah, benefit of the fair, doubt. Yeah, fair, fair. If you're a new voter, like ask your parents. <laughs> no, it's like, where do your parents vote? <laughs> right. It's really not hard. Um, also, if you're a new voter, low key, like I assume you're in, maybe in college, like you can vote through your college. You can yeah, actually low key in when I was, the first time I ever voted, I was in college and like they did it for you in your dorm. Like it was kind of like absentee energy cause you're obviously you weren't home. And it was also the year of Hurricane Sandy. And I got a letter in the mail like six months after the election that my my ballot was never cast because of Sandy. Interesting, conspiracy. I, I don't think it was like an important election year. I don't remember what year it was. Sandy was 2013, 2012. I don't know. All that to say, my vote didn't cast. 2012, so, oh no, that would have been a presidential election law. I wanna say it was 2013, actually, when I think about my college years. When I think about where I was during Sandy, it was 2012. I, you Sandy know what? It was so crazy. A simple Google search. Oh, I'm sorry, I wasn't thinking about, hold on, I think I was thinking about Hurricane Eileen. No, Sandy was like really major. Hurricane kind of Sandy, oh no, through, 2012. I lived through Hurricane Sandy. Like that's kind of like a fun fact about me. I was in New York, it was so crazy. Yeah. I wasn't really affected by it. It was actually so crazy how like in parts of the city, like people's cars were underwater. Like downtown 10, because the, the city is kind of on an incline and so. 10 blocks up, like my lights flickered once. That was the most like craziest thing that happened. So I didn't really like live through Sandy, not to make everything about me. But she'll try. Um, so I'm sending well wishes to Darius and just know like your OG fans, like your true fans, we ride for you. And we know this is not a reflection of who you are. And we know that there's a conspiracy against you. Are you ready for our next story? Yeah. A little more music news because Ariana Grande is tearing up as she previews vulnerable songs from her upcoming album, Eternal Sunshine. So Ari posted to Instagram a video of her with like, I guess some, um, what's the thing? Label big wigs. Yeah, like of members her, of her team. Yeah, I was getting like, this is for the label of her sampling her new album, like talking about the process of recording it and when she started and what the inspiration was. But so she has a new album coming out in March. She started recording right after the strike. So this is like, you know, SpongeBob era songs. Oh, wow. SpongeBob era songs. Because SpongeBob broke in the summer. This, I think she started recording this in like September. 
when does the album come out march i want to say like i do think she's a universal music group client i do think releasing an album while umg and tiktok like haven't worked things out like will severely impact streams like I, it's, it's actually like a really big deal but they're not gonna work things out no i know and by the way so like, all my TikToks, people have to still release music i got notified yesterday like all my TikToks with the music is no longer have been removed. They're like silent. They're like, you want to switch it up to like some public domain song? I'm like, no, I'm okay. But they're not going to reach an agreement, so there's never a good time to release the app. So it is what it is. No, and Universal Music Group is quite literally everyone except for me. So stream Toast and 100% by Claudia Ashray. This could be a good opportunity for you. Time to support indie artists. Straight up. Straight up. Well. This is, you know, exciting. I feel like it will be a good window into how she's feeling about what's happened in her life in the last six months and public perception and all of that. So, By the way, is Ariana Grande the Justin Timberlake of girls? No. Okay. Ariana Grande. I'd have to think. I have like, to think. Yes and is giving I owe an apology to nobody cry me a river. Just saying. It's it, a thought starter. I'm not saying no, for it's sure. a similar just, energy of like, I'm going to do me. Right. Even if me is bad. But the things that Justin has to answer the for crimes versus Ari are not really comparable. Yeah. No, that's fair. That's so fair. Yeah. Okay. So would you say that like Ari is a small scale JT or we're just hating the comparison altogether. The comparison's not analogous for me. I understand what what you're saying, but it just doesn't feel apples to apples. Fine, fair. I'll drop it. I'll shut up. I've silenced her. I've silenced I'll her leave. finally. I'll just leave that. Okay, do it. What if I just go? Do it. Our first walk off? Can't be over that. this. Can't be okay, over this. Also, I say that every time I walk off. Our first walk off. Like I've walked off. Like You've literally times. never gotten up. That's that's cause for leaving. Bye bye. So, are you guys ready for her next story? Let's just jump right in. Oh, she's still wearing her headphones. She can hear me. I wanted to catch her in the middle. She's back. Do you have anything to say? Do you have anything to say? Welcome back, Turdy. I'm sorry for disrespecting you. How? By saying you didn't get up? By literally insinuating that I should like kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm sorry for saying that you didn't get up. You proved me wrong that you got up. So yeah, because I don't know about you, but I did run for four minutes straight. So I can't get up now. Classic. Before we dive in, I have something to say. Okay. Today's episode is brought to you by Manscaped. Getting ready for Valentine's Day and don't know what to give the gift, gift the gift, don't know what gift to give the man in your life? No worries. Manscaped is here to save your love story with the all new performance package 5.0. Snag 20% off and free shipping with code toast at checkout. It is the ultimate gift to elevate his grooming game and keep the romance alive all year round. So let's zero in on the hero of Valentine's Day. The Performance Package 5.0 is basically just a kit of grooming essentials that the man in your life needs. The most important thing I think in the kit is the Lawn Mower 5.0. It's an electric trimmer. It features skin safe technology. It'll guard his sensitive areas from any grooming mishaps. Also comes with an LED spotlight, which is super bright. The package also features the Weed Whacker Nose Hair Trimmer, Manscaped Liquid Formulations, two free goodies, the Shed Travel Bag and the Boxers. Comfort is king. Get 20% off. Free shipping, code toast at manscaped.com. It's a gift for you, but it's a gift for your man. Also, getting your man something that gives him a pouch. Men don't have pouches like girls do. Men need one good pouch. And I will say, the one from the performance package is fabulous. Ben uses it all the time, and it is like his go-to travel. Like, I have a thousand pouches, but... Ben has one, and that's really all he needs. So 20% off and free shipping with code toast at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use code toast, T-O-A-S-T. Here's to keeping the romance alive, one smooth move at a time. Today's episode is also brought to you by the new Lionsgate movie, Scrambled, that we've been talking about all week that I'm so excited for you guys to see because it comes out February 2nd. And today, hey, Jax, what day is it? February 2nd. <gasps> Groundhog Day. 
Oh, we have to talk about that. We have to talk about that. Scrambled is in theaters now. So Scrambled is a heartfelt yet hilarious journey of self-discovery and self-love. It's written, directed, and starring Leah McKendrick, who is, quote, among Indie's top, Indie Wire's top, fo- top female filmmakers to watch this year. So the plot of the movie is really just like a relatable moment for, I think, a lot of the toasters. Quintessential eternal bridesmaid Nellie Robinson, who's, of course, played by Leah McKendrick, is constantly finding herself between weddings, baby showers, and bad dates. When she begins to feel like the clock is ticking and is faced with bleak romantic prospects, Nellie decides to freeze her eggs. Scrambled. (laughs) Setting her on an empowering journey to a brave new world, where she ultimately discovers that the one she's looking for, you guessed it, might just be herself. So Film Threat says this is brilliant storytelling. You can learn more about the movie, watch the trailer at lionsgate.com slash movies slash scrambled. The movie is out today. Is it, it is rated R. It is in theaters now. So check it out. I feel like this weekend it's raining in New York. It's such a movie weekend. Go to the theater, get a snack, a soda, treat yourself, and go see Scrambled. Just a heartfelt a, a movie for the girls, you know? Yeah. The trailer will make you cry. I love the actor who plays the brother. Go check it out. The movie's called Scrambled. In theaters now, it is rated R. Get yourself a ticket and enjoy your weekend. Is there anything better than popcorn and soda? No. Yes. Pretzels and soda? No. French fries and soda? Go back. Popcorn and... Like chocolates thrown in? Goldfish? Yeah, M&M's in. A party mix? Yeah, but specifically popcorn and... Like really salty, buttery popcorn hot that you throw the m&ms in the m&ms get really soft yeah that's good i know what i'm gonna say like you're gonna yuck my yum so like can you just try to stop yourself like dried cranberries in there raisinets oh dried cranberries literally same thing i love raisinets i haven't had them in forever you walk off because you're sick you walk off yucking yums disgusting raisinets amongst other things by the way bunch of crunch low-key very good Bunch of Crunch is only sold at movie theaters. Same with dibs. dibs. We have this conversation like once a year. I'm having deja vu. We need to talk about Groundhog's Day because Puxatani Phil like knew that he was up on the chopping block and mm-hmm. Homeboy did not see his shadow. Spring no. is coming soon. Honestly, like I know it means nothing. Like it has no bearing on the climate, on Mother Nature, on the environment. But when I saw that news this morning, like I perked the fuck up and PETA wants to take that away from us. And that's why they're disgusting. Yeah. And Puxatani, like he doesn't give us that early spring often. Often. Ever. So that when he does. It means something. It means something. But he also knew he needed to give the people something so that we continue to ride for him. No, and it's nice. Like, okay, Punxsutawney Phil literally worked half a day and he doesn't have to do it again for another year. Like if that's not living in the lap of luxury, I don't know what is. No, apparently his digs are Lux. I am sure. What is it? I feel like he lives at like the Gracie Mansion of Pennsylvania. Yeah, and they probably have like a whole little caretaking team. Yeah. I'm happy for Phil. Phil stays winning. Know that I am. Speaking of, do we have a story about Demi Lovato today? No shit, but I me- you know what? I'm going to make that the fifth because I meant It's funny. It's, it's so funny. funny. But our next story is a lovely story about Jason Kelsey, who is playing in the Pro Bowl this weekend, only so he can take his kids to Disney. Relatable. This was cute. Jason Kelsey says traveling for the Pro Bowl means a Disney trip for his kids. So he is in Orlando to compete in the Pro Bowl this weekend. While there's football on the horizon, there's also family time for the girl dad of three who plans on taking his daughters to Walt Disney World. He said, I don't even know what you do in the Pro Bowl anymore, but it's down in Orlando, so I get to take my kids to Walt Disney. Not off the Super Bowl, Walt Disney World, but as long as Wyatt gets to see Elsa, I don't think it really matters. Yeah, like it's that classic thing when you win the Super Bowl. What are you going to do next? I'm going to Disney World. I literally never understood why the fuck they say that. I don't know. Now that I've been to Disney, I kind of understand. No, for sure. And I think they do go to Disney, but like... Like as a team? What's, what's the correlation? I don't know. Can you look it up? I feel like as football girlies, like we need to know that. Yeah, yeah. Why Super Bowl? And I think it's cute... I think it's cool, actually, that Jason Kelsey, like, never plays in the Pro Bowl, and he is this year only because his kids want to go to Orlando. It's so cute and sweet. And, like, they don't know the difference that, like, you know, Daddy lost, so we're going to Disney, versus Daddy won, so we're going to Disney. Right, it's Disney. But what is the correlation? And I feel like, is the Super Bowl even on ABC? Like, ABC is owned by Disney. That I would understand. I feel like the Super Bowl is, like, on CBS. So it all started when Michael Eisner... Or it's just a tradition, which is nice. Like, there's no monetary. 
contract. It all started when Michael Eisner, CEO of Disney, and his wife dined with a couple of aviators who traveled the world nine stop. The wife asked the pilots what they would do next, and they replied, we're going to Disney World. Okay, what does that have to do with the Super Bowl? Right, how is that applicable here? Like, I know it's just a thing people say. That's where the idea of promoting it for the Super Bowl came from. Walt Disney met with NFL organizers, and they reached an agreement for the most valuable player to say the phrase after the game. Oh, wow, this is like a coordinated attack. But is it like a verbal contract? The like, and now that's just a tradition, or do they legally have to i imagine it's one of those things that, like you always dream of saying the first player to say he would visit the famous park and star in the company's commercials was phil sims who won in 1987 with the giants according to reports the mvp earns between 30 and fifty thousand dollars just for saying the iconic phrase so i guess if you win and you say it you get paid and if you don't you don't i feel like they always say it it's one of those things like if you want to be a football star it's like your biggest dream is to say it but thirty to fifty thousand dollars. When's that article from? Because I feel like with inflation, like it should be two fifty. Twenty twenty three. And I, by the way, I did read. I, mean, I wanted to talk to you about this. That a lot of um, the players playing in the Super Bowl this weekend have like incentive based bonuses in their contract if they a make it to the Super Bowl, if they win the Super Bowl. So I think I read Patrick Mahomes will make like another million dollars just for getting to the Super Bowl. Proc Purdy has a. Uh, it's not a lot of money, but he'll make like a nice little bonus, like six figures low six figures so there are like you know merit-based bonuses packed into these nfl salaries that i'm glad to hear though i do think like brock should kind of make up the difference of the fact that he's not making super bowl money yeah no it for sure but anyways, I hope that the Kelsey family has a blast this weekend. Me too. At Walt Disney. I'm looking at a picture of them from the last time they went to Disney, and it looks like... Mm, no, I was going to say it looks like they have that double stroller that Olivia has that I hate, but this one looks a little different. They would never. We were clowning on Olivia's stroller in the Patreon episode. Like You guys are so mean. No, like me and Shabiro, she needs a new double stroller. <laughs> Why? It like does it. The wheels don't work. It's literally about to... Oh. The kids are like sardines. It's just a piece of crap. By the way, like... Get her one. Like, stop complaining. Obviously, it bothers you more than it bothers her. That's true. So go get her one. That's true. Put my money where go my to mouth Target. is. Yeah. No, there's one so I have in mind for her. She's the one pushing it. There's one I have in mind for her. She's literally the one pushing it, and she doesn't appear to be complaining. I know, but I just feel like she's she's become stubborn about it. She's, like, trying to prove something to me that, like, the stroller works and prove to okay. her husband. By the way, that's so something Olivia would do. Classic. Like, su suffer in silence just for the point. Yeah, totally. Now are you ready for our fifth and final story? I am. Demi Lovato performs her song oh. Heart Attack for Heart Attack Survivors. <laughs> Demi Lovato performed her song Heart Attack for a room full of heart attack survivors, and some audience members were not <laughs> impressed. Demi was the headliner at the American Heart Association's Go Red for Women Red Dress Collection concert. That's a mouthful. On Wednesday in New York City, where she sang some of her biggest hits, including Sorry Not Sorry, Cool for the Summer, Confident, Skyscraper, Heart Attack. According to, her, according to an eyewitness, it was her choice of the song Heart Attack that raised a few eyebrows. They said, quote, she was belting heart attack in front of the class of 2024, who were all survivors of heart attacks. There was a video package played before the fashion show and concert where the women all shared their brushes with death via heart attack, how they were all saved during a heart attack. One has a pacemaker for the rest of her life. Demi was smiling the entire performance. <laughs> Oh my God. Demi was smiling the entire performance and it was really tone deaf. I said just want to say eyewitness i wasn't there so i can't really like really read the room of the tone like i don't know how it went down but he, like this might be the most iconic thing demi lovato's <laughs> ever done it's peak comedy it's so funny and like low-key you survived a heart attack like lighten up like this is funny it is that's funny funny and i also feel like if i were demi lovato maybe uh, oh i'm performing for the heart association of course perfect i have a song called right, just about this thing and it's like one of my most popular songs yeah i feel read like the maybe, lyrics read the lyrics Let i was literally them. about to pull them up i feel like maybe she was even asked to perform because she has a song about the subject matter yeah of course putting my defenses up because i don't want to fall in love just speak it if i ever did that 
it's gonna be hard, but I'll try. I think I'd have a heart attack. Okay, yeah, I guess if she fell in love, she would have a heart attack is kind of the moral no, of the I, story. I guess the hard part of the song is right after this chorus, she probably says the phrase heart attack like 10 times. Heart attack, heart. like she keeps saying it. Yeah, it's no, like, like, like the last, in the, point. the last five lines. If I ever did that, I think I'd have a heart attack. I think I'd have a heart attack, heart attack. I think I'd have a heart attack, tack. I think I'd have a heart attack. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I think I'd have a heart Oh, I think I'd have a heart attack. Wait, I'm just want to say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. As she ends the song, she says, I think I'd have a heart attack eight times. And perhaps that's where some of the outrage has stemmed from. And, and that I definitely do understand. Now, I feel like all heart attack survivors are different. So I think maybe like some of them like thought this was funny and some of them thought this was insensitive. Cause like Loki, I don't know how I would act if I had a heart attack, but I think it would be, I would find it funny. Yeah. Yeah, I think that it would kind of be ruder for her to not sing heart attack. It would have been like, oh, the elephant in the room. She has right, a song. You guys can't sing. handle the song. Right. I think she was giving them a lot of credit. Yeah. Too much credit, clearly. No, they're like a strong group of survivors. I think she thought that they, like they've been through worse. Yeah, I also love how the article is like an eyewitness as if this was like a catastrophe. It was. I'm obsessed. I'm eyewitness on the ground. There are certain moments in history <laughs> that I like would do anything to have witnessed firsthand. And like, I don't even think a video of this would suffice. Like I needed to feel the energy in this room. But to me, this is 10 points in Demetria's column. And don't come for me. My father died of a heart attack. You can eat my ass. Oh, yeah. So we could say, I feel like we needed to clarify that. That like, Oh, yeah. Like we have been touched. Our opinions like matter here. And the I American think Heart Association, The American Heart Association like failed our father. Like we. Right. Can say. We can this say. This is funny. This is hysterical. And I do feel like. Right now, they'll probably try and like distance themselves from it. But I feel like someone on the committee was like, we should have Demi perform. She has a song about this very thing. It's like breathtakingly synergetic. I love every minute of it. Yeah. The end. Oh, and it's a bop too. Right. Pop that pussy. You survived it's a, a heart attack. It's Enjoy. a great song. And look at Demi donating her time to a cause that might have like an important. I'm sure she was paid handsomely. Really? I feel like these things you do for free, no? No. These associations have so much money. I know, but shouldn't that money go to like, I don't know, finding a cure for heart attacks or whatever? No, it's like they go to getting Demi Lovato so that more people buy tickets so that they can raise more money. Yeah, but like imagine if Demi just donated her time. I don't think that's how it works. I don't know if, I don't know. I don't know either, but also this is also great PR for the American Heart Association because I didn't know that they had a... a Gala. soiree this no month. i know that they have their walk they love their walk walking is good for the heart exactly so and is laughing soul. keep, keep so is the singing toast. jackie walking is good for the toast and so is laughing so sit down and listen to the toast so is singing and dancing to a great song such as heart attack such as so those now, are the fast five the good news is that while the stories may be over, the show is not because we have our new segment that we have not forgotten today, Friday, where we kind of wrap up the week by bestowing two prestigious honors upon four different people. Jack and I both are going to nominate someone who acted in, in a weenie-like manner this week, and we are going to give them the award of the weenie of the week. Mm. And we're going to give an award to the queenie of the week, someone who we thought showed great <laughs> fortitude against all odds. So I think let's start with Queenie. I'm feeling motivated to no nominate Demi Lovato. Oh, I love for Queenie. For Queenie, for her brilliant choice of song. <laughs> no, this kind of was like how a queen would act. <laughs> I love that. I completely agree. And I'm feeling motivated to nominate the Weenies as the eyewitnesses in attendance who couldn't dance along. I love that. I'm feeling motivated for that. It's giving like Weenie energy. Like, come on. I completely agree. It's, it's actually giving the definition of like weenie. That's why we started yeah. this. Time. Yeah, because I was going to do a different weenie, but like weenie is not meant to be, you know, I'm a so lek. serious. You know, it's yeah. so serious. It's just like yes. weenie. You did something a little weenie. And I don't want like other weenies to like then feel like, oh my God, I was in a category with this person. Like it's so it's, true. It's not a title. I feel like Lala Ken, it's not something you should wear forever. It's yeah. just for the week. 
It's a moment in time. Yeah, and next week, like you could even be weenie one week and queenie the next. For sure, my queenie this week is Margot Robbie. Like I think the way she responded to the snub, like she could have really dug in her heels and been such a victim and I actually would have put her in weenie. But the fact that she was like, listen, other women were nominated, it's all good, everyone seriously calm down. Love and respect. Love and respect to that statement. Why aren't you saying anything? <coughs> you just like love dipping into the Barbie. I do. I love starting stuff. You love starting stuff. And that you get, like here you are being one of those people that's like Barbie, Margot Robbie's a queen for the way she handled. Oh my God, you think I'm acting like a Barbie stan? Kind of. You're like kind of obsessed. No, I mean, Jackie, like think about how far reaching the Oscar snub story went, like Hillary Clinton's statement. And Margot Robbie could have been like such a fucking loser about it. And she wasn't. Yeah. Sorry, she deserves credit. Yeah, but she wouldn't have been. Even if, you know, she's has daggers at the HFPA up on her wall. Like she knows that that's, that's not the way that you act. Right, so that's queen behavior. Okay, agreed. Now, my weenie is someone I really wish I did last week. And I thought about this person all week. Okay. It's Jessica Biel. For weenie. For weenie. That eating in the shower thing, like the more I think about it, like it's fucking, it's literally the definition <coughs> of weenie. It's so losery. I feel like honestly, like it requires no further explanation. No, it does. And I can't even look at a yogurt without I can't, thinking. I, uh, really? I can't think of, look at a clementine. I can't look at the shower. Yeah. Without thinking, shall I have a snack? Yeah, no. No, there will be no further explanation. Like Jessica Biel is my weenie of the week. I thought about it all week and I was so mad at myself for not choosing her last week when we talked about it in the episode on Friday, but it needed to marinate. Yeah. So with that, we will bid you adieu. I hope everyone has a great weekend. I hope you have a I great weekend, too. Turdy. I will. Good. You Good. should. Because it's the one you got. It's your weekend. Thank you guys so much for listening to The Toast. Jackie and I are both like coughing, sneezing, sniffling. I'm not even doing the wrap up. Goodbye. Love ya. Bye.